Pisces, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing to the channel. It is much appreciated. Let's go ahead and jump, in, jump into this. Let's see how Pisces comes into the week. The Magician. Very nice. All right. The Advice is the High Priestess. Very nice. Succession. One, two. And the outcome is the Knight of Air. Wow. So, Pisces, this could definitely be in regards to your um, career and finance. This could be in regards to you having an idea, taking the resources that you have and putting it behind a specific path. Look where it... it the Knight of Earth at the bottom of the deck. So it says that you're going to have to buckle down and get things done and honor all of your commitments. You do have spiritual help with you. Uh, you have the idea. Now make the plan, write the vision, make it plain, and then it'll be time to move forward, institute those new, um, that new direction, that creativity. To do the work, do the leg work in regards to. So, Pisces, this looks very good. It looks like you'll be taking some swift action at the end of the week. You have some ideas you want to be, you want to act on. Um, you've been very decisive. Um, some creative solutions to some problems or to some issues that may arise. It looks like this is definitely career and finance based. Um, this is just about you being dedicated, dedicated to this position. Uh, it's about buckling down and so this is definitely about you making a decision in regards to a path, buckling down and uh, listening to your intuition in regards to making calculated moves. Um, there's some talent, some that you may have reserved within yourself and it, it's dying to come out it, it's time it's time for you to take some creative measure here let's see what this is about smart making smart decisions and it looks like you are um, lack though maybe it was lack of focus and direction but it looks like you're going to buckle down and really get this thing done. Wow, magic. And you're the magician. You can make this happen. You have the idea. Now it's about bringing the idea out of your head, which would be the heavenly realm, into the 3D, the physical, um, making it come to fruition. Play your cards right. The only way you can play your cards right is having that plan, though. So make sure you are pre-planning. Make sure you you have it all in order. Succession. So it looks really good for you this week. No complaints here. You'll be making some swift move in the direction that you want to go into. And it looks like you just, wow, you're going to have victory in doing this too. Um, but you just need to honor your commitments. Okay? And if it's uh, getting... If you're starting your own business, you know, getting paperwork done, uh, inquiring about the, the legal side of starting a particular business, um, getting manufacturers uh, for if, it, if it's a product, if it's service, learning about, you know, service based and how you will present your product, uh, commerce, e-commerce. So definitely this is this is someone getting very sure about their position about what it is they want to do how they want to institute it how they want to push it out to the world so this is really good um stay tuned for the next segment i really don't see a lot of love in this if this, if this is love You may have some secret feelings for someone and you may go to them and try to, uh, you, you give them your truth. I don't feel like it's like a, a whole, you're not giving them everything. And maybe that's why lack is here. You, you, like you're giving them half of 
how you feel and you're not speaking in, t in your entirety about the situation you're giving them how you see things it's like you you want to offer this person something maybe even marriage or something of that nature you want to choose them but there's a dynamic of something being held back here you're not sure if they see you in the same light or they're judging you on a different scale if that is love Whomever you're dealing with, if it is, they might be giving you money. They're going to honor their commitment, but it looks like it might come to a close or a temporary halt. Okay. All right. So, Pisces, have a really good week. Stay tuned for the next segment of this reading. I hope that this reading resonated with you. I hope that you take something from the next segment. Also, it's the real, the real corner with L. Read some real advice that you can institute in your own life. It's coupled with the Tarot. So, hopefully it resonates. Take care, guys. Happy holidays. Thank you for being here. Hello, everyone. So, today on... L's real corner. All right. So today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos, uh, subscribing to the channel than men. So I apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex, just apply it to your life, right? Okay. All right. So emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal okay those these are non-committal people these are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you uh with anything or with anybody it, it might spill over into every facet of their life we're talking about more so relationships romantic relationships um so that's that's what we have here not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people they could be married uh in love with another or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit um and which hence they are emotional emotionally unavailable so when we look at when we dissect this this term here we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable the mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because you know they tell me how much they like me, they compliment me, they touch me, we have sex, blah, blah, blah. So you rationalize and you say, they're not emotionally unavailable. They are whatever you want to deem them as. But emotionally unavailable, what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense suppo supposedly you know um it is a relationship it, it could be if an if then relationship if i do this then i'll get this this type of person the emotionally unavailable person it's not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an unavailable un 
it emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason. We've got some reasons here. It could be more uh, to invest emotionally. Okay? So you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will... Um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive, seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place, and you say, well, no, I, you know, Monday isn't good for me. Let's do Tuesday, um, maybe at the same place, uh, 7 p.m. No. This is what I want. I want it here now, that time. If you can't do it, then okay. I'm okay with not seeing you. I'm okay with us not getting together. But it has to be on my term, my terms, my routine. And their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No. They're not into that. There's no um investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay? So this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life. No real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah, uh, contentment. Yeah, in this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more, better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to ask the answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i say what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay granted it can happen it can happen but i do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation an emotionally unavailable person 
this is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just, it's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment. And you tell the person and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time and you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay? Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you, the page of swords. Be inquisitive, be curious, be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person. Learn your person. This is if you want commitment, learn this person. So you know what you're dealing with. You know who you're dealing with. The most, I say this every single time, or I ask the question, every time I, I do a reading, a personal reading, the, the other person, the quarant wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth, expecting uh the asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years well we know that that is not the truth you we both go on about our lives you find out that i've only been doing youtube videos for two years uh well three years and then you say you come back to me you say well i i asked you the question how long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I ha you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along, you want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So, you you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably, most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say well i only see you on wednesday and friday what are you doing you know the other days of the week or i know you see you work blah 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 but um maybe we can get together on one of those other days if they start to be evasive then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. 
when people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games, they give you just a little bit, or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to, sur to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavailable, you know, emotionally unavailable person. All right? Because they become the seven of swords. Now, at this point, you can deal with this shit. I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um, drinks. I just, I want to really spend more time with you, around you, because I would like to get to know you, all right? They're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid the rigidness of their routine, right? So, um, in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less. Or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but but do understand that good news and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You stated your claim. You've created the boundaries and now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They they still come back around being evasive, seductive, you know, the same old thing that you might need to uh, this is why the I put the world here. You now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation. Okay, you some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. 
scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You're gonna have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson. Walk away. A person can institute these types, this type of behavior, when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own, and there's no trauma. Um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and, you're, and you can walk away. Be able to walk away. Um, emotionally um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you if the result is this person is coming back and being the same. And some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter. Because you, you now know how to deal with, with situations. You can readily identify. Also, with me writing... The tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business, or family, or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be... Or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy? And you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know him. You do need to do the investigative work. The page of swords is the investigator. Because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the king of swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So... We have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing. It talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for, for anybody. Um, share this video, okay? Thank you, guys. Take care, guys.